Kentucky back in 32. A young man named Son Martin was making Mountain Brew. If it wasn't for his whiskey, he wouldn't have a dime. Cost two months more to Roosevelt, and that'll be the end of moonshine. Look out now, son Martin, you better watch your whiskey still. Cause if you're gonna keep it, you'll have to shoot to kill. The boy standing by your side is about your only friend. Look out now, son Martin, again. Frank is out there looking, he's searching everywhere. With him is the doctor who came to get his share. They're shooting up your neighbors, they're trying to scare you, son. They want to take your moonshine and put you on the run. Look out now, son Martin, you better watch your whiskey still. Cause if you're going to keep it, you'll have to shoot to kill. The boy is standing by your side is about your only friend. Look out now, son Martin, again. We have some nice rooms for two dollars. Three dollars includes breakfast and supper. Just a room. Maybe you'll be with us a while. Ain't sure. It depends. Lowell, take Mr. Long here up to room 205, please. If there's anything you'd be needing. Not right now. God, mister. I've carried some heavy ones. We get a lot of salesmen here, railroad people, and lumber buyers. I reckon this here suitcase is about the heaviest one ever. Here, I'll take it. No, I can't. Oh, I'll take it. Something the uh, little lady downstairs, her husband uh, work in the hotel too. Miss Simpson? Yeah. She ain't got no husband. She uh, did one time back, I reckon. Married to a salesman, I believe he was. He lived in Louisville till he got run over with a car and died from it. Now she's right back here in Marlette. She lives right here in the hotel. Oh, no, sir. She lives out with some kin, a uh, workman. Got yourself a real nice front view here, if you like to look out of the window. Can I get you anything else? I'll let you have mine. Well, a lot of times these traveling men come in here and they wonder if I can uh, get them something to drink. Oh, yeah? You talking about liquor or uh, soda pop? Well, they tell me the two of them go together pretty good. Yeah, they sure do. If and you'd like, I could maybe run down the street here and... Uh... Bet you could, boy. Uh, Not without his boy. Well, it looks like a B.A.R. rifle to me. That's what it is. You got any idea what I use it for? No, sir, I sure don't. Uh, I'll tell you, I use this for hunting, moonshiners, and bootleggers, and anybody else that... Uh, indulges in the illegal sale and drinking of liquor. You understand, boy? Yes, sir, I sure do. Yeah. Well, if there ain't nothing else you want. Not right now. Okay. Bathroom's right down the hall. That's why it tastes so damn good. What? Well, son, he don't go putting a lot of devilment in his mess just to hurry up the fermenting. Just like his daddy. He didn't want to go a hurry in him none. You waited till he said it was ready. Or by God, you drunk clear busthead. Some people, I swear. If they ain't talking about closed down mines and tight ass Herbert Hoover, it's about old man Martin's whiskey like none of us ever made any. <laughs> hey, son, <laughs> thought you had a light in this place. Just a minute. Easy, 
Jesus Christ. Got a, a light in the barn, a light in the steel, and they've got one in the crapper. <laughs> Those he <that> can read. <laughs> Son, I don't even sit around here all night passing wind with these here punk and rollers. So I'm fixing to take a couple of gallons of good old shine and pay you um, $5 confiscation price. How do you feel about that? Looking for John W's son Martin. I'm at the right place. I have interrupted the prayer meeting. Well, I figured you'd show up here one of these days. Hey, you recognize my voice? Son, I don't reckon I ever met up with your friend. That's Frank Long, Mr. Bailey. Well, now, Mr. Long, whereabouts are you from? All over the state, you might say. I might not. I'm asking you where you from. Uh, more recently, I, I guess Louisville. Well, I'd say it's a pretty place. Well, I can't see myself, because he's never been there. Frank Long, uh, what, what do you do in Louisville? Oh, I work for the government. Mm -hmm. That'd be the state government? Oh, no, sir, the United States federal government. I see. Mr. Frank Long, uh, you have any chance a prohibition agent? Oh, that's pretty good, Mr. Baylor. Uh, you got a keen eye. Keen nose, too, I reckon. Let me see your credentials. Oh, they, uh, they gave me this here uh, identification card uh, with my picture on it. Uh, they gave me uh, this here, stop a man in his tracks and sit him back five pieces. Boy, are you threatening somebody? Oh, you asked for my credentials. Well, I see them. And you can see my credentials up there, too, sitting against the porch wall. High-powered rifles and shotguns. If and the law needs upholding these parts, Mr. Frank Long, I uphold it. I take care of it. You'll uh, confiscate some whiskey, Mr. Taylor? Well, I reckon you might say so. A swig at a time. Royce, give this little long boy a sample of our white lightning, will you? Throw up lifeline, throw up lifeline, someone is sinking tonight. Throw up lifeline, throw up lifeline. Right good stuff, huh, Mr. Long? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll be crying shame, throw that out in the ground just because some titless old women figure a fella oughtn't to drink, now, wouldn't it? I'm asking you now, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, Mr. Baylor, just because a man's paid to uphold the law don't mean to say he can't appreciate the finer things alike. Well, have yourself another little drink, Mr. Long. <laughs> Frank didn't come here to drink no whiskey. Well, I think it's time I went to the house and had ourselves a little talk. Mr. Long, if you come here as an old friend and son, we are right glad to have you. But if you come on business, well, a revenue is a rare bird around these here parts. <laughs> I mean, he is so rare, if an old boy was likely to see him, and you know what he's liable to do? Well, he's liable to shoot that rare bird and, and take him on down to Louisville and have him stuffed, bring him back here and put him over his fireplace or maybe hang him over there in the corn crib along with the other skunk tails. Oh, listen, that's a federal officer. I have the right to order you to back me up. Yeah. You better get right on down the road now while the getting is good. You go back on where you come from while you're still a sound body and can breathe fresh air. Now, go on, get. 
I'll be seeing you again, Mr. Baylor. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen, I'm lucky and pass away in my sleep. Be seeing you too, son. Well, God damn it, I said it started to rain. Rain like it never rained around here before. It washed away timber and crops and houses that had stood for a hundred years. And worse than that, it washed plum away all the topsoil. Now, you can't grow a market crop on sandstone. No. And, and, and so you'd have to set out making stills. Why, half the families around here, if they didn't have stills, would go hungry. Now, I ain't interested in any washtub outfits. Well, Mr. Frank Long, you have come to the wrong county. Ain't no big-time operators around here. How about 150 barrels of prime corn run and stored away? Oh, that old story. Yeah. Well, it's hell's bells. Some folks around here believe anything. Anybody around here tells you that, that son and his daddy made their living digging coal. Why, the old man himself got, got killed in the yeah. cave in. Well, they may have dug coal for the potatoes and bread, but they were counting on the whiskey for the big casino. 150 barrels run and stored to eight age. That's 4,500 gallons. Why wouldn't they sell the stuff? Five bucks a gallon, that's 22,500, right. And the bootlegger, he'd get himself 122,000, couldn't he, right? Not if I capture it, because if I capture it, I'll pour it on the ground and the figure comes to zero. Uh, I suppose you'd like to do something like that now, wouldn't you? Well, ain't gonna bother me, none. <sighs> now, supposing they did put away a little whiskey. No future in the mines, and in the farm they can't grow a crop no more in rocks and weeds. But maybe there is a way, if they got the guts and the muscle and the willpower to do it. If they don't mind breaking the law. Well, what about a man's right? A man's got a right to eat his corn, and he's got a right to drink it, or wash his rear end with it if he wants to. My pretty little lady, my sister. Are you listening to anything I've been telling to you? Excuse me, mister. I gotta go and do me some work. Well, what is this gonna get you anyway? Five dollar raise in salary? Here, you'd be such a sweet boy, they maybe give you a promotion. Son, I heard him. He knows how much you got and all about it. I think he's trying to get Mr. Baylor to help him. Come on, now, you know better than that. Son, he is a federal agent. Uh-huh. Hi. <laughs> Somebody's going to see us. Oh, Aaron's working. Well, somebody going to buy. Mm. Oh. Sweetheart. Mm. Uh. Oh, I hear you. The sun's in my eyes. Close them. Uh. <laughs> And I'm getting a stone bruise on my... Hey, what's that on the back of your leg? What? Like a birthmark. Never noticed it before. Well, usually when I'm with you, I'm facing the other way. Oh. Hmm. When that cap falls, that means the mash is ready to run. Put your ear down close on the bow. Listen, it sound like me to fry. Ah, lay that shotgun down. You looking for something, mister? Hey, boy, you're pointing that thing at me. No, it's just a pointing where you happen to be a standing. Come on, lay it down. Damn, I sure like to, but my finger kind of catched up in this trigger, and I'm scared to move. I want to shoot you right between the eyes, nigger. You want to get shot? No, because this old shotgun about to go off and blow them mesh bells all to hell. And anything close to them. Gee, you better hang on to that. I'm going to be seeing you again, huh? Who oh, is it? It's me, the bellboy. Get down there on your knees. You hear me out there, mister? We see your face around here again. We're going to take and throw you all the way out the window. Not yes, if you can hear me. I'm not fooling either. You think I'm fooling? 
All right, you stay there till we tell you, you can come in. Give me a nickel. See him around. No, guess she ain't. We're a little early, though. Well, maybe they aren't serving dinner yet. Miley, love it, Pat. Get out of the car now, will you? Well, Come on. Whoops, watch my hat. Quit mumbling about your hat. I don't see nobody around. Well, we're here. Might as well eat. Go ahead. Boy, I sure am thirsty. All right, sweet thing. We'll take care of that. Give you nice Coca-Cola. I do. How are you folks today? We're hungry, miss. That's pretty much what we are. That's well, you sure come to the right place. Well, I sure hope so. My goodness, it's a hot one, isn't it? <laughs> oh. You folks on a vacation trip or something? Now, how'd you know that? Oh, them traveling folk come in here all the time. I can always tell. Yeah, sure. Well, I want a Coca-Cola before I die of thirst. <laughs> What are you going to have, Doctor? Sure enough. You a doctor? Oh, not that kind, Miss. I'm a dental physician, now retired. Golly, that must be awful nice. Do you just travel around all the time? That's right, just travel around. My, we do see some sights, don't we, do? We sure do. Well, sir, I guess me and my little girl have the salmon croquettes and uh, Coca Colas. Let's... Salmon croquettes, Coca Cola? Now, I bet you a quarter my boy has the barbecue and a double order of fries. Am I right? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see it on here, but he's right. And a knee hiker in soda. Doggone, he's right. Okay. <laughs> I know my boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Dog, I sure like the tan suit on that boy over there. I'll be back directly. Mm -hmm. Ma'am? Excuse me. Uh, where'd you get that suit you got on? Oh, why, I guess Cincinnati. Mm, I sure like a suit like that. Really like a suit like that. Mm -hmm. I like that suit. It ain't all woolly and hot like this. One. What What do you pay for a suit like that? Uh, this suit? Uh, well, I think 50 bucks. 44. Don't you remember you were wondering if you should spend that much on it? Uh, do you mind standing up and uh, let me take a look at that suit? Please? Oh, that's the prettiest suit that I have ever seen. You can be proud of that suit forever. Doc. None. Ain't that the prettiest suit you've ever seen in your life? That's yeah, a pretty suit. Yeah, a that is a pretty suit. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll buy it off of you. <laughs> well, gee, if I had another, I'd sell it. <laughs> I, I don't want no other. I want that one. 
Oh, what am I supposed to do? Just take it off right here? <laughs> well, I, I guess, I guess you're gonna have to. Uh, there's, uh, there's twenty dollars, and there's twenty dollars, and that's, uh, that, that's forty, and there's forty-five, and uh, you owe me a dollar. Uh, sir, sir, is your friend serious? Yeah, he sure is. I mean, you can't just walk in here and, and take anything you want. Well, I paid you for it, didn't I? But I don't want to sell it. Honey, why don't you just call, please? Ask that waitress to call. Do you allow people to come in here and bother your customers like this? I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if this is a joke or what. Well, would you please call the police? Ruth, never mind. Let's just leave. Are you ready? Now, you better take that coat off, or I'm going to put a hole in it. Come on, now. Give me the coat. And them pants. Oh, now, look. This... And the pants. Hush, and give me the pants. I like that tie. I tell you what, take that tie off, and you give that to me, and then you won't have to give me no change. And the shirt, too. That's it. You're doing good. <laughs> you know what I think we're gonna do? We're gonna have you take off everything right down to your skin. You don't want my underwear. Please, mister. What's the matter? Don't you like this scene with no clothes on? Mister, you better get out of them drawers. like that dress she's wearing? Who? Who? Her. It's all right. But I don't wear much brown. Well, it might look good on you. I don't know. I think it's too small. No, I don't think so. Do we'll, we'll take that dress, too. Oh. Now, look, mister, you got the suit. Hush, hush, hush. Now, come on, lady. It ain't gonna hurt you. Come on. No. Come on. Get out of them clothes. Come on now. Pink teddies. I like pink teddies and a shapely woman. She ain't much. Well, we don't know for sure now, do we? Do a boy. Might as well see the whole show. Telling me how come those two people just went out of here without any clothes on? Well, it was the damnedest thing. There was a couple of nudists running around in here. The waitress had to throw them out. Nudists? Yeah. Whose clothes are these? Now, Frank, we drove over 200 miles to meet with you. You want to talk about nudists or whiskey? I never met a prohibition man yet, I trust. That's good, Duel. That's very good. You remember to say that three times every night before you go to bed, you hear me? I've got no time to play games, Toby. We gonna talk or not? <laughs> hey, come on, we're just funning you. Come on, sit down. Tell us about this deal you got. Come on, sit down.
across the stream in the trees. That's where it's still at. Moonshine could be anywhere under the house for all I know. Well, might as well introduce these people and get right to it, son, seeing as how you're so busy. This here is uh, Dr. Talby, used to be a dentist, now a scientific whiskey expert. Come here to taste your daddy stuff for the government, see if it's any good. A uh, little lady, Miss Miley uh, Mitchell, uh, doctor's assistant. And uh, over here, we'll have Mr. Dual Meter uh, come as a special investigator to help us capture the stuff in case you force us to take it that way. Uh, folks, this here's son Martin, my old army buddy. Son, uh, even though you're breaking the law, we've given a lot of consideration to the fact of the amount of work you put into running 150 barrels, and we've come up with a proposition we guarantee is going to interest you. My goodness, it's getting warm, ain't it? Uh, Mr. Martin, I wonder if you'd have a cold drink of water in the house? Oh, oh, yeah. Could you let me have a cup, then? Cups on the pump handle. Cups on the pump? Oh, yeah, sure enough. Miley, be a good girl. Fetch the old doctor a nice cup of spring water, if it means. Oh, uh, son, you just uh, listen to it first, huh? And then decide. Hey, I can't get this dumb thing to work. All right, Miley, just forget it. Why don't we just go in the house and sit down and uh, we'll explain the whole thing to you, huh? Miley'd be real tickled to make us up a pot of coffee. All right. Come on, lovey pet. offer to, to buy the whiskey off you. I'd say use bootleggers. Yeah. Ooh, my goodness, if the folks in Louisville could hear you say that. No, uh, what Frank means is that we bought it on behalf of the government. Well, I didn't know the government was in the business. Well, not in the business uh, per se, so to say, but there is such a thing as government spirits, didn't you know that? Oh, yeah, for medicinal use and so on. Uh, all you got to do is give us a sample. Well, you buy it and you can sample all you want. Oh, yeah, the government ain't that dumb. I mean, they ain't gonna buy it unless, uh, unless Dr. Talby says it tastes good. And they ain't gonna buy it. I heard you think you're fooling, son. You're, you're dealing with the United States federal government. There were a couple of dudes trying to put something over on a poor, dumb hillbilly. Uh, son, I'd, uh, I'd like you to tell me something. How much you want for your whiskey? $27,000. Who's going to pay $27,000? 150 barrels of moonshine? Now, just a second, just a second. The man says that's his price, that's his prerogative. But uh, I was just thinking, if the government won't pay your price, what would you say if I bought it as a private citizen? I'd say you was a bootlegger for sure. Or a speculator, huh? What would you say if I bought it and left it right wherever it's at, gambling on repeal? If the country stays dry, I lose my shirt. But if Roosevelt gets elected and the 18th is repealed, I'd buy tax stamps and market the booze before the big distillers can get started again. Well, I'll admit it's a, it's a chancy proposition, all right. But uh, I might be willing to take the gamble. Matter of fact, I give you forty-five hundred dollars for the whole load right now, dollar a gallon. Frank, why don't you and your pussyfoot scientific whiskey expert get the hell off of my property? You get fresh, buddy, and I'll I'll, I'll nail you to the wall and blow your goddamn scrub farm apart. I sure would like to see you do that, Frank. Why don't y'all go on outside and let me take care of this boy? Well, you so much as even twitch, and I shoot the knot off when you're red tied. 
You can't get all three of us. Bet you a dollar I can. <laughs> well, I guess the talking part's over, ain't it? You are making a mistake, Sonny. And I can't help but feel you know it. I also feel that in time, you're going to want to change your mind and accept our offer. Ain't that right, Frank? He'd better. So we're going to give you time. One day, you don't come to us by tomorrow, we ain't going to buy your whiskey. We'll just take it. That's all. Come on, sweet thing. Coffee's almost ready. Uh, just a minute. You want my answer now? Friend, that's up to you. Be seeing you. We'll have some nice rooms. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I think uh, the little lady and me, we'll have the bridal suite. Bridal suite? Mm-hmm. And uh, something nearby for my boy here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Lowell? Just a second. You just take your time. Lowell? Where are you, Lowell? Gee, Frank. She's all right, ain't she? Mrs. Simpson. Miss Simpson, huh? Yes, sir. She is all righty. What would you do with two women? Same thing I do with one. Ain't she enough for you? Well, if you mean by enough, all I want, sure. Little old Miley can dish up the poontang. But she is one woman. And that one there's another. Lowell, I'm waiting. And, mister, they are all different. Each one has her own little pleasures and secret tender places. Just thought of something. Yes, sir, she's all right. Lowell here will get your bag. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, What's that? I just thought of somebody to know where the whiskey's at. Yeah, who's that? Son's hard help, uh, Aaron. Used to work for the old man when they when to run the whiskey. Oh, yeah, boy with a shotgun. Nigger. Yeah, well, it shouldn't be too hard to get it out of him. Yeah, I never met one yet didn't want to talk. Yeah, that's a true thing. Thank you, Miss Simpson. Thank you very kindly. Sugar dip, get away from the kitchen. Do, boy. Don't do that. You're going to break it. Now get on up here. Come on. Sound, and you're a dead nigger. Put on your shoes, these. We're going out. Evening. Good to see you again. thing out of you. Where's that whiskey? I can't tell you something I don't know. Is that so? All right. Frank, give old Duel here a hand, if you please. Take him out. Wow. 
punch Ty's hand. <laughs> I like to see their arms a flapping. That's enough, drop it. All right, boy, now you're going to tell us? I said, now you're going to tell us. Take him up again. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't know. Son could have hit the stuff while he wasn't around. He knows all right. He's just lying is all. Hey, wait a minute. All we got to do, tell Sonny don't give us the whiskey, we hang his boy. Yeah, and then what? He hands over the stuff. Cares, he just goes and gets himself another nigger. <laughs> do you, I caution. Good thinking, Frank, that's just what we're gonna do. Now, let's see. Open both doors so I can see them real good. Go to it, Frank, loud and clear. Son! Son Martin! Can you hear me? We got you, boy! Take a look over in the park. You got 30 seconds. Tell us where your whiskey's at, or we give him a push. You hear me? Come on! You got five seconds. One. Two. Looks like that boy's got some gristle in him. Looks like he's gonna make us go to work. Come on, let's get out. Come on. Coming, Frank? Federal boys? Well, that's the thing. I don't know what they are, but they ain't no federal agents. They come here armed. Hurt nice strung up there in the barn. Now, I think these boys gonna try to get everything they can. If they don't have enough guns for the job, well, just go out and get some more. Well, what is it they want, son? Well, whiskey to start with. And you want us to stick our ass out to protect it? We got us a few troubles of our own, son, just to feed in our families. Mr. Worthen, I think you're going to have some more problems if we don't bunch up here. Put a stop to these boys right now. Well, threatening and doing is two different things, son. You ran them off once, didn't you? Well, not for good, I know that. But if we don't chase them, Hey, some of us might be end up just plumb put under. Well, what I'd like to know is why you called us here, son. I mean, since all we want is your whiskey. Well, that's all anybody's got to say, huh? You want us to fight them? They ain't coming looking for nothing of ours. I say you should talk it over with them. Feel them out more before you reach any set notions. Well, I sure appreciate that, Mr. Worthman.
Howdy, Boyd. How do, Boyd? How you doing? Uh, just fine, Dr. Talby. Well, you're looking real good, Boyd. Frank, this here's uh, Boyd Caswell. Me and him, uh, we cellmates at Eddyville. The way old boy drinks, why, he knows wherever still in the county's at. <laughs> don't you? Right. Hey, you got some moonshine in the house? Huh? Who's there? Well, uh, he's a prohibition fella, Boyd, but you don't need to worry about him. He's on our side. Let's have some of that shine. My, he's a real beaut. Come on, sugar tit. You too, Frank. Boyd won't tell on you. Boyd, get out the fruit jars there. Howdy, boys. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing there, Moose? These fellas are gunmen. Bring your business. They are. I gotta have them to do the job. Well, federal agents is how they're supposed to look. Well, they don't look so bad. Uh, hey, you brought them, huh? Bring your present, dude. Good oh, to see much you fly. boys again. Nice to be here. Much fly. This is Frank Long, who's promising all the fun and prizes. Maybe some of you know him. That's the man sent me there to do. Yeah. If you going right back there, you start making a noise with that thing and shooting people. Huh? My office gets to hear about this. It's all over. Lord, don't I know that. Uh, no shooting unless they start it. No shooting to kill. No, sir. No, sir. Boy, got corn out? Yeah. Come on, boys. Get inside out of the sun. Oh, look at it. Hi, Fred. Hi, Molly. Hey. Hey, Joe. Is that you, I see? Hi, Molly. How are you? Hi. You boys in a coon Hi, Miley. Hi. Play it right, but pull it. Uh, they start a shoot up. Frank, uh, what, what, what's this pulling we got to do? All we need to do is trust each other, lead a clean life. We shall have our reward. Now, let's go on in there and tell the boys what you got in mind. Hey, here comes <laughs> trouble with that boy. How come? He's starting to eat his own inside. He is? He's starting to make rules. What do we need rules for? We do think alike, don't we? women accused him. Oh, God. He gave them gas to put them out and then assaulted them right there in the dentist chair. God almighty, a girl could come in with a toothache and walk out knocked up. <laughs> he spent three years in prison and after that was arrested twice for bootlegging. God. And that other one, Doyle, he was in prison for attempted murder. Well, they are convicts. Well, go tell old Bud Blackwell that and your cousin Virgil. They wouldn't listen to me. Oh, you want some coffee or something? What are you going to do? I don't know. Not much I can't do, but wait. I don't like the sound of that B.A.R. Oh, hell, how can he shoot me and still hope to find a whiskey? But they could, they could kill you and spend their good old time looking for us. I don't know. They say they won't make a deal, but I don't know about it. They offer to buy the whiskey? Dollar a gallon, you call that offer? Maybe they'll go higher than that. Did you ask them? I'm gonna do business with them people. But you have to. I ain't gonna go away just because you say no. Well, we waited this long. Anyway, elections in two months. So 
suppose Roosevelt don't win. Oh, he's got to win. You think people are going to let things get worse than they already are? But you still can't be sure prohibition is going to be repealed. Well, and I sell a whiskey anyway. Well, not to them people. You're breaking the law anyhow. Now, what's the difference? I see the difference. What surprises me is that you don't. McClendon, this here is the law. All right, get out of the way. Come on, get! I want you to tell Son Martin something for me. Tell him I commence busting stills. I'm going to go on busting them till he hands over his whiskey. Will you just spread the word, mister, you and your moonshining neighbors? You go and have a talk to Son Martin. you still at? What still are you talking about? Are you over here? Come on, old. Me? Come on, get over! I mean, the still you moved from where it used to be. Oh, that still. That one's in the barn. We need our still. We need it, mister. Now, Mr. Worthman, if Son Martin was cooperating the way you're doing right now, he wouldn't have to bother you at all. Open yet? Where are you taking this cornmeal? That ain't corn, mister. It's clover seed. Now, boy, I ask you, where are you taking it? I'm delivering this up to the Blackwell place. A little corn to make moonshine, huh? No, sir. It's it's clover seed. We'll just see about that. Do you know? It is clover seed. Boyd, you know where the Blackwells live. Now, you know Frank said we supposed to wait a day or two before hitting the Blackwells? Why is nobody answering my questions this morning? Okay, I know where he lives. Well, come on then. 
We'll get us another one for breakfast. Go ahead and call the boys, folks, if you want to. I just ain't got time to run around arresting everybody for stealing a comb or a keychain. <laughs> you know what you ought to do is go on home and get your wife to take some of that mentholatum and rub it down your chest. Well, now, Mr. Frank Long, they tell me you've been raiding, putting a lot of good fellas out of business. I'm going to lay it right in front of you, Mr. Baylor. If you want this thing to end, you better go have a talk with Son Martin. And think maybe I better have a little talk with Covington, see if they sent a fellow named Mr. Frank Long here. You got that number, Royce? You want the number? I'll give it to you. You want to call Covington and ask about me, you go right ahead. You tell him I raided three stills last night and busted hell out of them. Tell him what he was doing, too. What were you doing, lying home in bed or out drinking whiskey? I don't recollect you asking for my help. I didn't get none, either. County sheriff supposed to uphold the law. All I get's a hard luck story about the poor moonshiners on the worn out farms. You best start recalling what you said, because more than three people are going to be out of business if he don't hand it over. You asking for my help now? I ain't asking for anything. I'm telling you. I'm telling you to tell Sun Martin to face the facts of life. And by life, I mean a couple of people could get killed around here before we're through. Where are you going? I ain't finished talking to you yet. I'd like to go on home, crawl into bed and pull the covers up and sleep until Sunday. But instead, I got to go out and see about a shoot. Shooting. You tell me you raided three places last night, including the Blackwells? No, uh -oh, Blackwells is next, unless you talk to Sun. Well, that is funny, because somebody just hit Blackwell still, and they shot an old boy named Boyd Caswell. Is he dead? Well, not yet, he ain't. <laughs> Royce, uh, you lock up after Mr. Frank Long, and then when we get back, you remind me to call coverage, and unless Mr. Frank Long still wants to give us that number. <laughs> Ah, not a bad haul. Ain't what we come for, though, is it, do, boy? No, it ain't, Doc. Ah, oh, sir, there's the old revenuer. Anybody get hurt? Uh, one boy got hit. Mm-hmm. Well, don't say nothing in front of him. Howdy, Frank. Now, we got some talking to do. Well, speak up. Don't be bashful. I thought I said we was only to raid free stills and then wait. Something I ain't been told. He hit Blackwell's this morning. Well, they done the job, didn't they? Yeah, you seen Boy Castle around? <laughs> What's he talking about? Well, you asked me if anybody's hit. Yeah. Well, Boy got shot. Well, where is he now? Well, I'm not sure exactly. You left him? Well... Jesus, of all people, you left Boyd Caswell? We didn't leave him. He just didn't make it back to the cars. Well, I warned you, Tolby, any unnecessary shooting, I'm going to blow the whole thing. Well, Frank, I, I'm, I'm real sorry yeah. about this. Uh, I don't want to get you messed up in it, so why don't you just go back to the hotel? I'll meet you there later. Are you fix it? I'll fix everything. Don't worry about a thing, you Frank. You take care of him, too. I'll take care of everything. You don't lock him up. All he's right. a lunatic. He ain't fit to be letting around roots. Well, he, he ain't a lunatic. Well, you lock him up, I'm telling you. Well, don't I'll let take, him around. I'll take care of him. He's lovable, you know. You remember now, damn it, Toby, lock him up! Do... One time years ago, you climbed up on a garage and dropped a rock on a boy's head, didn't you? That fat son of a bitch is always picking on me. That big fat son of a bitch caused you to run away from home, didn't he? 
If you hadn't, though, then I wouldn't have gone to jail. And you wouldn't have met Boyd Caswell, would you? That's right, at uh, Eddieville. And if you hadn't been at Eddieville... Then I wouldn't have thought of him to help us. And if you hadn't thought of him... He wouldn't be out at Blackwell's right now, would he? Probably sitting up in bed telling them we ain't federal folks at all, just some old boys from Louisville. Well, I guess you're right. You're damn right I'm right. Well, look, I better get a couple cars and go on. Wait a minute. This time I'm coming with you. You know, the funny part is, boy, he says that they ain't Pedro's at all. Well, as soon as I get him on downtown, I'm going to find out who your friend really is. Well, now, what do you plan to do with Boyd? We're going to take him to the doctor. What in the hell do you think I'm going to do? You just wait a minute. You just wait one minute. Now, Why'd you get out, out of our way before I take you, you in with him? Let him die. Just you let, let him die. Let him the pound sand and the rat hole. Uh. Son, we ain't hit you, have we? I'm sure I'm sorry about all that, Mr. Whitman. Oh, yeah. Well, you sure as hell don't look sorry, I tell you. Son, neighbors look to help each other, not cause pain and hardship. You the one that made that big run, that's all they want? Son, you ain't got no family. That's the difference. Yeah. All right, Mr. Whitman, I'll help you build a new outfit, and i help you hide it. Now, if you don't want me to do that, then I, I just go on leave, and you can do whatever you want. Son, right neighbor lives. I do. What in the hell do you think you're doing? If and you can read, Shorty, my bad, says Sheriff, Brook Lake County. He's in there all right, Doc. Are you going to get your cars the hell out of my way? I've got a sick prisoner here. i got to get into a doctor. He ain't going to make it. Are you going to get them cars out of my way or not? I tell you what, Papa. You give them to us. We'll take care of them. I'm a telling you for one last time. You're right about that last time, Papa. Somebody else is going to have to finish off Boyd. I'm empty. Dump it. boxes of 30 aught sixes and, and give me all the double aught 12 gauge shells you got in the store. You gonna pay cash? Well, hell, you know when I pay, put it on the bill. I'm afraid I can't do it. Why not? Well, boss says you gotta pay that $260 you owe for you can charge anymore. Say, Willie, how long has my family been coming in this store? I don't know. Don't keep track of all our... 30 customers. years we've been paying our bills. Well, I'm sorry. It's a new policy. Since when is that? Look, we got to pay our bills, too. Since when is that a new policy? Since this morning. Afternoon, son. Where's Miss Simpson at? Oh, she just stepped around back for a minute.
Lizzie, I need two hundred dollars, fast as you can get it. For what? The things I need to stay alive. All of a sudden, I ain't got no more credit. I've been to the feed store, the bank. It don't take long, does it, for word to get round? Once you start telling people, you have to have everything your own way. If I don't have this my way, then we don't have it. You could end this whole thing right now. Sure, all I got to do is give him the whiskey. No. You sell it to him and let's leave this place. Son, you do that and I'll give you everything I have. Leave and go where? Well, I don't know. Anywhere. No, now, come on, Lizzie. Where are we going to go? Go down to Georgia and pick cotton for $3 a week? Go on up to Detroit like your brother and get a job in a factory, try to make a lot of money and wind up staining on a bread line? Look, we said we was gonna wait for the repeal. That's what we're gonna do. You have to have everything your own way. That's all we're talking about. You know, I have to have $200. That's what we're talking about. I ain't gonna pay to see you killed. Hey, tell the truth. He send you? Don't say anything dumb, okay? Well, if he didn't send you, what you doing here? I don't know. I guess I wanted to see what you were like. Hey, you go with that woman from the hotel? Well, I guess I did. She ain't your type. You married to him? Toby? You're sweet. You like him? Not really my type, but it could be worse. What the hell are you living with him for? I haven't had any better offers. Look, if something was to happen to Toby, what'd you do? I don't know. Go back to working in a house, I guess. Nice part. There was always somebody to talk to. Even when there wasn't any customers, like in the afternoon, we'd sit around talking and fixing each other's hair. Sometimes I and another girl would go shopping and have a lunch out. I can't stand sitting around all by myself. Just really ain't in the mood, are you? Don't worry about it. You explain something to me. How come you don't run while you have the chance? I don't know. Come on. It's old, but it's still alive. I'd say that'll do the job.
Doctor, he's here again. Well, sir, he's old Frank. We had a good thing going. Now it's all over. Oh, I reckon he heard. Heard? Heard? They're parading the bodies up and down Main Street. Is that a fact? I didn't think anybody'd find them for a couple of days. Ooh. Well. You just have to move along a little faster, that's all. Oh, listen, listen, I'm telling you, it's, it's all over. We don't get out of here now, we're done. Well, Frank, I guess your part is done. But, uh, me and old Duel, we gotta find us that whiskey yet. Yeah? Oh, well. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to shoot you first. Now, don't get, Goldie. It's time for you to go home, is all. You're through here, boy. We don't need you no more. Think I'm just going to walk out of here? That's about it. You took a chance and didn't make it. But hell, you're still alive, ain't you? Old Duel there, he's for putting you under. But I said to him, hell, Frank, he ain't going to tell on us. He knows if we go to jail, he'll go right along with us, hoping and praying some accident don't befall him. Ain't that right, Frank? Huh? Mr. Slim. You mean to say I ain't... I ain't going to get nothing out of this? That's what I'm saying. I was the one that brought you in. And I'm most grateful to you. I'm just going to walk out of here with my hands in my pockets. That's just about it. <laughs> hey, you know, Frank, boy, you ain't as dumb as I thought. Get in the car and put that down and get in the car. Move it. Come on. In the car. Move it. Uh, uh. <laughs> Bless your little heart. And the best of luck to you, Frank. How you'll be needing it. <laughs>
Can I talk to you? Lady, I got nothing to talk about. I've retired. You mean you're leaving? Yeah, you guessed it. I'm going back to Louisville. Earn the army. Yeah. Why not the army? I forgot how easy it was. You're just quitting. Mm-hmm. You help, son. I'll pay you for it. Help my old buddy, huh? How dumb do you think I am? Risk my neck for your boyfriend? How much? About $800. What will you take? I guess you got some secret treasures buried down there. I could jump on your bones right now. Still go home in the morning without helping anybody. Only trouble is I ain't in the mood for romance right now. <laughs> Just a moment. people who can help his son now are his friends. Only he don't have one. Am I right? quicker and that's bigger. Here, give me a hand at this. Sure wish we had a couple more boxes and double alts. Well, we just have to get by with what we got. Okay, I'll see you in a spell. Man, oh man. Now, this time like this. Get 
do, big boy. like to shut my hate off. What's that gonna get him? I'm a doubt they'll be back tonight. Boy's got a powerful lot of thinking to do. Yes, sir. You boys sure made a mess of things this evening, didn't you? Hey! Where is everybody? I was all alone last night. Well, where are you going? Morning. You're going out to Son Martin's place, huh? Yeah, I bet half the town's out there by now. Seems there was some uh, shooting last night. Yeah, I reckon your friend the dentist is gonna get himself a surprise. Heard now everybody around here is going out to help Son. Well, look out in the street. You don't see hardly no cars, do you? Can I ride out with you? Hey, wait for me! Lord, I've been left alone enough. They're still shooting high. Wasting all them bullets. See up there? Look what's coming. Hey, doctor. It's like trouble. That's the Worthman's. That's, that's Blackwell. That's, that's our little sniper up there. Right, look up that hill, doctor. See what you got on your hands. Look like some women, too. He come to help. He come to watch. Well, the 
Ain't you in the wrong pew, Mr. Lawman? I guess you're all wondering what I'm doing here. I'll tell you. Them fellas are hired to help me out. Turned out to be nothing but a bunch of bootleggers. They quit me because I wouldn't go along with them. Said they'd shoot me if I got in the way. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to deputize all you men, and we're going to drive them bootleggers all the way back to Louisville. <laughs> you with me? I tell you, you gotta go down there now and help Son Martin, otherwise they're going to kill him. And, uh, and you won't ever find his whiskey. No, oh, I'm talking about a man's life now. Well, now, Ben, as you're so, uh, so thoughtful, uh, I'll need to be in there with you, Mr. Yeah, well, so, Mrs. Freddy, I'd be down to help him. That's what I'm talking about, Virgil. That's just what I mean. And, and you'll help son out, now, don't you? No, well, we all got to go down there well, doing the shit. Get your foot along. Woo! Get your foot along. Get your foot along. Woo! Come on, get in there. Get out of the way. Are you here, fun? Hey, wait a minute. It's him again. Him. Sure drop in unexpected like, don't you? What you doing with him? I don't even know what happened. Well, what I'm doing here is... What I'm here for is to bring help. To protect my interests. Your interests in what? Now, I reckon you're going to cut me into a partnership on that whiskey. He says we got us a partner. You're going to shoot him? You want me to? Oh, come on now, boy. Don't you talk like that. You're going to get your cut. I gotta protect my partnership, and I got something here you can do with the use of right now. U.S. Army Browning automatic rifle, huh? Big sweetheart. I, I really think I ought to be leaving. I own this place. You know what I'd do, Virgil? What you do? I'd set me up a gate over there, and I'd, I'd charge folks to get in. That's a hell of an idea. I mean, I, huh? I tell you, they, they'd pay to see that old boy go down that hill again. I tell you, that was good, weren't it? <laughs> Lizzie wants us to go on down there and run them bad boys right out of that barn and save old someone, don't you, Lizzie, huh? <laughs> you see, I tell you. <laughs> hey, why don't you uh, just go on and... I'll ask you here. I'll just... Anybody want to go on down there on Sun Martin's yard? Stand in front of Tommy Guns and maybe get yourself killed for old Son Martin, huh? Well, come on! <laughs> Look at that stampede. Hey, mister. You want to go on down there? <laughs> Uh, 
that crowd. It must have come from all over the county. All wondering where you got it hit, I reckon. Why don't you tell me, son? What difference does it make? We get out of here, I don't let you out of my sight. We don't secret dies with us. Or I get out of this jackpot, Frank, and you don't. Yeah. Hey, look here. What's going on? They're taking people. sitting up there on the top of the hill waiting for you to get killed. They even brought their lunch. Three minutes, son. All the thinking time you got. Shouldn't we do something? You heard what he said. We move and they'll shoot them. Pick them birds off from here. Doctor thinks she's got us beat. Forgetting or something. We got something of his. Well, what's everybody looking at me for? Come here, sir. Come here. Now, listen, I don't have anything to do with this. I mean, I don't even know why I'm here. All we want you to do, honey's go out there in the yard and nobody's gonna hurt you. Oh, no, now, wait a second. Now, no, no there's no other way you gotta give the truck. Look, we won't do nothing to you. Maybe you won't. But what about him? Listen, you gotta trust me. It's gonna be okay. Well, I'll be switched. Open the door. Hey. Hey, doctor. It's me. Yeah, I see you. Come on over here, love you, fat. I can't. They got guns aimed at me. Says so y'all don't let those people go and clear out of here, they're gonna shoot me. Oh, come on. They're just funning you. No, Doctor, they mean it. Come on over here. Honest, Doctor, they mean it. Sugar tip, move over here. Come on. Shucks, we come this far, Doc. Yeah, we did. Well, she was a cute little thing. Awful dumb, though. All right, you folks, you coming out? We're waiting for you. We waited too long, you know? Two minutes, son. Your friends are looking mighty nervous. Uh, 
speak for him. How about if I get him out of the barn and get him to line up for you? How are you going to do that? I tell him the whiskey's buried in the cemetery. 150 barrels have to be a deep hole. They wouldn't believe you. Well, I tell him there's mine shafts under there. And they go on over there and start digging. And then when they's all bunched up together, looking in the hole. I open up with, with Big Sweetheart. One minute left, sonny boy. Bit of a chance, though, isn't it? He'd be standing out there in the open. Well, you know any better way? Son, where's the whiskey really at? Under the barn. Under the barn? You're standing on it all this time and you don't know it. Son, we're partners for sure now, I'm telling you. I just hope you know how to use that thing. Don't you worry about that, buddy. Don't you open it up until I give you the word. No. Well, sir. That's real good thinking, son. Now, you just bring out Frank and your boy. This ain't their deal. Leave him alone. You bring him out! Look, you got your guns on me. What more do you want? Well, I guess just your whiskey, boy, that's all. Where's it at? You leave them people go, I'll tell you. You tell me now, or I'll cut you down. You gonna tell me? This goddamn damn hill, Billy. You knuckleheads, get out of there. Go on, move. Get going. Move it. All right, son, now it's your turn. Where's it at? Where is it? It's over there in the cemetery. You open the grave, says John W. Martin. He's a shaft laid down to a mine tunnel. You telling me a story? Well, why don't you go look and see? That's a damn good idea. All right, boys, get shovels and come on and start digging. John W. Martin, dig him up. Come on, come on, come on. We got all day. Time's a waste. Let's go. Come on, move out. Move out and get going. God damn it, move. Come on. And you stay right where you are, you hear me? I'll be right here. You're damn right you'll be there. Come on, quit dogging it, dig. Come on, get down there. I couldn't hear him good, could you? Say this whiskey was under there. Be giving it to him? <clears throat> Dog, there's something down in there, Doctor. Can you see the barrels? All I see is a hole. Whiskey's down there. You want a light? I got a light down there in the mine shaft. Well, turn it on. Switch is in the house. Hey, Frank, flip on that light switch right next to you, will you? 